recognize the gentleman from Minnesota for five minutes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chief Moore, thank you once again for coming before the subcommittee. Despite dramatic budget increases in fiscal years 2022 and 2023, we're seeing reduced access to outdoor recreation and diminished public benefits across the national forest system. This has been evident in the Superior Na National Forest of Northern Minnesota, for example. In the Boundary Waters Canoe area, a quote, temporary cap on backcountry permits equal to 80% of the previous cap was put in place in response to increased demand and use during the COVID-19 pandemic. During that time, campsites in the BWCA were also closed, but many of those campsites still have not reopened today. Clearly, these caps are not temporary. What progress has the uh, Forest Service made in reopening our national forests and ensuring we return to pre-pandemic levels of access? Yes, thank you for that question, Congressman. So we're currently working with the local community to do just what you described. Uh, to date, we have not made a lot of progress, um, but I would be willing to get back with you uh, by the week's end to give you more specifics on what we have been able to do within the community. Thank you. Uh, the uh, service is largely reliant on Ticketmaster-style online permit registration system involving a mad dash to compete for a limited number of permits when they are released. And oftentimes, people buy up large blocks of permits that often go unused. And I recognize this isn't just an issue for the BWCA uh, or the Superior National Forest or the Forest Service. That said, what specifically is the uh, Forest Service doing to address this? So, so, so first of all, we, we want to be able to really understand what is going on. And, you, you know, we are trying to be responsive to what people are choosing to do by buying up blocks. And so we're looking into it to see what opportunities we have to uh, limit uh, what we see happening across the, uh, that, that whole system. And to date, I don't have any news to report to you in terms of the progress Chief, that we Chief, made on are that. Chief, are you looking at to limit the big blocks uh, of buying the permits for entry? Is that what you just said? We, we're going to be looking at all of it, okay. including the big blocks. Well, let me ask you this. Would increasing the number of available permits and returning to pre-pandemic levels of access help alleviate this issue or make it worse? I, yes, I, I think it would, Congressman. Okay. Uh, changing gears a bit, would you consider timber harvesting to be an important tool for the Forest Service to protect against wildfire risk? Uh, yes, timber is a necessary tool. Uh, in fiscal year 2024, the Forest Service missed its timber harvesting target by approximately 260 million board feet. That includes missing the mark on forests like the Chippewa and Superior National Forest. You missed your 3.4 billion board feet goal by over 7.5%, uh, almost 8%. So how does missing this timber harvesting goal affect the forest uh, system's wildfire risk? Yeah, Congressman, one, one of the challenges we have is litigation. And if you look at the amount of litigation we have with our problems, we would have exceeded our timber targets. We have no control over that part of it. We just have to deal with it. And so our plans was to meet or exceed our targets. Uh, we would have done that, but for the litigation that we're currently under. Uh, weaponizing of the court system is what you're saying? I'm saying that we would have met our targets, but for litigation. The service has lowered its timber harvesting goal from 3.4 billion board feet to 3.2 billion board feet for the next two years. If the Forest Service is aiming to harvest 200 million less board feet of timber over the next year, how do you plan to address this delta in terms of the wildfire risk? Well, well actually, um, for the last 20 years, uh, our timber harvesting has gone up. In fact, if I look at the last 20 years, uh, we've increased our timber harvesting by roughly 30 percent. So I'm not really sure about the numbers that, you know, that you're spouting, but I'd be happy to meet with you separately to look at the numbers that you have and where you got those numbers from and compare to what we're showing in our books. We, we got them from the professionals in the Forest Service and uh, thanks in large part to the decreased availability of timber from federal lands, mills across this country are closing, uh, including several in my district that have led to layoffs for hundreds of employees. And Given that many of our national forests are working industrial forests, does the Forest Service take into consideration lost economic activity when it makes decisions that limit responsible industrial use of our forests? Yeah, Congressman, I, I mean, anytime a meal closes, it hurts us as well. 
and many of our employees have grown up and live in those same communities. And, and, and I have third, one second left. Uh, I, will, I appreciate, Chief Moore, that you said in your comments uh, that our, uh, you're looking at national forests to produce energy and mineral development. You know in the Superior National Forest, uh, it's a working industrial forest where mining and timber harvesting are a desired condition, and we wanna keep that uh, just as it is. Thank you very much, and I yield back, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I just add to the, uh, to the gentleman from Minnesota, we have talked to the chief offline here. We want to see those numbers um, where they're saying that those harvest levels have actually